Hello, so today in Microsoft Flight Simulator we're having a look at a freeware aircraft available from FlightSim.2. This is the North American Rockwell OV-10 Bronco in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So if you have a look around it you can see it's really nicely modelled. For a freeware model this is actually pretty good. You see top marks to the developer. It's very, very good. So we're just panning around it, having a quick look here. We're at Boonville, by the way, so that's um, D83 in the US. So yeah, you can see the modelling is pretty good. So if we go and jump inside the aircraft, you see the modelling continues to be good. Maybe it's not as good as, you know, the professionally made 3D models in some of the payware aircraft, but it's pretty good, isn't it? looking around and you can't really complain because it's free it's better than a lot of the payware aircraft I've seen so most of it appears to be functional which is really great so let's go and get it up and running shall we so we'll go and turn the battery to on so one thing I have noticed is you have to use the mouse wheel on the switches and the mouse wheel seems to be reversed so that might be something they fix in fairly short order I would imagine so rolling the mouse wheel downwards makes the switch go upwards um, then we've got the right gen and left gen and then we should be able to just start the engines off the back of that. There is a uh, propeller control here and um, throttle control. So there doesn't appear to be a fuel shutoff valve anywhere. So underneath um, the ignition systems they're on auto by default so it, everything is there and working. That's the undercarriage lever by the way. Um, Okay, so we've got the inverters here as well, so we'll just choose inverter number one, but we'll wait until we've got the engine started to do that. So we'll go and start the right engine first, and if we go and sit outside, go and look at that right engine and wait for that to happen. I'm not sure what's making the steam engine noises in the background. Or maybe it was compressed air or something. You'd imagine it'd be an electric starter, though, wouldn't you? Okay, so that's the the right engine started. Let's do the start on the left engine. If we look out the window, we should see that happen. It's worth pointing out, actually, while we're doing this, the windows do open. Thankfully, it's in front of the. Notice that didn't really change the sound, so there's little bits and pieces you get in the payware aircraft, you know, that little bit of extra attention to detail, but we're not going to complain. This is free. It's remarkable for a free aircraft, to be honest. So we've got the engines up and running. I'll just make sure I've got my parking brake on. I have. So we're going to put the controls through for normal flight until we get to the runway. So you can see we've got the warning up for instrument power because we haven't turned the inverters on yet. So we'll go and turn inverter on for number one. You can see we've already got um, enough air pressure to control some of the instruments here for the vacuum driven instruments. And power has been supplied to the attitude indicator, which is great. A lot of the switches are in the correct positions already, like the oxygen supply, things like that. So let's just have a quick stir around with the controls, so you can see how that works. And the rudders are working, and the tow brakes are working, it's all looking good. Okay, let's come off the parking brake, and ease the throttles forwards. So you can see it turns very tightly, it's very, very manoeuvrable on the ground. Okay. Just roll out gently towards the wrong way. I haven't done any lights yet, have I? I believe the light controls... so that's a uh, radio... systems and wipers, floodlights, high intensity, this is for the internal consoles and instruments, oxygen, oh, here we go, strobes on, anti-collision on, uh, and you can, interesting, 
again the, the reversed settings of the mouse wheel are in place here as well so we'll leave all that alone let's just have a look outside to see if those lights are operating yeah we have the lights Okay, let's take this out to the runway. So we've got about a nine knot wind coming down the runway at Boonville. As you can see, the um, visibility out of the cockpit is absolutely fantastic. So we're gonna go for flaps for takeoff. I had a little go in it. So we're gonna be looking for about 70 or 80 knots for rotate, so full throttle. We haven't gone to full mixture, uh, sorry, full propeller condition for takeoff, but it's still going to accelerate quite happily. So we'll just gently rotate. You can see it. I've got the wing tanks on, remember, which are not helping. So gear up. Let's have a look at the animation. You can see it does move around in the wind as well. It's not the most stable aeroplane. It looks fantastic though, doesn't it? Right, let's get those flaps up and get the speed up. So we're over 100 knots now. It doesn't like going much less than 100 knots with the without the flaps. So you can see it's really struggling to make this turn. So what we can do, obviously, to combat that is push the propellers all the way forwards. Get some extra torque going on. You've got all of the um, yeah, look, we're way off the end of the gauges on the torque, so I'm just going to pull the propellers back. Obviously, we'll smash the engines up if we continue doing that. So, we're up past 150 knots now. So you've got pretty standard loadout of instruments. You've got switches here but to go between TACAN and VOR. I'm not sure it actually works on TACAN yet. It's not an actual operable switch. Obviously that's because TACAN isn't implemented in the simulator. You don't, do get the odd-odd aircraft like the, um, the Boeing 247 where it implements its own navigation network of beacons. But this aircraft doesn't have anything like that. So we're just turning round back over the airfield. Now obviously the Bronco is extremely manoeuvrable. It was used in Vietnam, I believe, or late in the Vietnam conflict. But, you know, you can use it for navigating through low valleys, treetop height at extreme speed. So we're going to come screaming in over the runway, around about just under 250 knots, I would imagine. Do a fast pass down here. see the visibility is absolutely fantastic but this is what it was designed for kind of squirreling your way through at low level to avoid being shot at I believe it was used to do drop-offs as well because there's a cargo pod at the back I think that could be used to, um, to drop things out of the back in flight in some models of the Bronco. I'm sure viewers will be able to confirm or deny that. Okay, let's... Do a nice climbing turn. I'm just pushing the engine a bit too much there and the warning lights were coming on on the dashboard. Get a bit of height and see how it stalls. See, so we're getting near the stall limit already. Look, it doesn't like getting near 100 knots, especially if you're pulling alpha on a turn. Not without flaps, anyway. So we get a bit of height. We'll just pull it into an unmanageable climb. So we're starting to get the stall warning.
pulling more and more back stick, more, 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 and it's dropped the left wing. Okay, we won't pursue that. I don't really want to try spinning this. I don't think it will end well. up a little bit to make it back around the corner, get some speed back on. So there's the airfield. Let's go and bring it in for an approach. Okay, so we're about 150 knots at the moment. Let's come back off the power. See, it's warning about wheels already. Just do that once more, just to see that happen again. It's very cool, isn't it? Okay, let's get the flaps down as well. So the flaps don't travel too quickly. See in a turn, it doesn't even like travelling at 80 knots. I am quite heavy, remember, I've got the drop tanks on. So I'm going to have to keep fairly fast on the approach, so kind of 70 to 80 knots, I would imagine, before I'll hear the stall warning. And we'll bring it in as best we can. It's a great fun aeroplane to fly, and it doesn't sit still. This is the great thing about it. It moves around in the air and you can you know it's a bit of a, a box of frogs we would call it in England um, you have to keep on top of it otherwise it could get away from you quite quickly okay so coming back into Boonville throttle. It's still wanting to accelerate as it comes downhill. That might be a function of having the drop tanks and it being a lot heavier. It doesn't lose speed very quickly, but it loses height very quickly. Since you come off the power, it started to sink. That's obviously the propellers. There's a, obviously a propeller on each wing, so there's the thrust from the propellers is straight over the surface so as soon as you lose that thrust it starts to sink like I said it's moving around which is making this fun brakes are very powerful. So there you go, there's the Bronco. It's very good, isn't it? So let's see what it turns around like. So if we turn it around... So you can almost turn it in its own length. Let's get this 
those flaps back up while we're taxiing back in. Don't think it has spoilers. No. I wonder what the reasoning is for the black pattern on top of the, the wing. It's a great looking aeroplane. Comes with several liveries. As I said, this is the Marines one. There's a Navy one as well. We've got our usual break dancing aircraft in the background. Looks like a little um, bird dog of some description. Okay, so parking brake is on. I'm presuming we can just pull the mixture levers back to fuel shutoff, which will kill the engines. And then we can. Ports on both of these, turn off the inverters, leave the power on for the moment. We had some lights on, didn't we? If I can remember where the switches were, they were up this end, weren't they? Here we go. So we got the strobes. Ah, these are click switches instead of using the mouse wheel on them. And the anti collision lights. And we'll put the Right, let's back it off, and then we can go for the, uh, sorry, the inverters. Oh, I've already done the inverters. And the battery to off. And then we can open the windows on both sides. So, it's impressive, isn't it, for a freeware aircraft. You can't really ask for a lot more, really. I mean, okay, there are some things that aren't quite as good as you might like. But really, it's very, very good. Let's try and ignore the break dancing bird dog in the background. <laughs> so there you go. The North American Rockwell OV-10 Bronco. Available from FlightSim.2. If we go... Actually, if we go and sit inside so we don't hear that noise. You can see there's the, the page at FlightSim.2. So just search for North American Rockwell OV-10 Bronco and you should find it. It comes with a nice PDF manual as well, with the various basic procedures, but as you can see, the, the procedures weren't difficult anyway. It's fairly obvious inside the cockpit. It gives you some tips about, you know, things, what to do in what order. Um, but as you can see, there's still a lot to be done on it, so the, the documentation is fairly sparse. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed that, and I'll see you again soon.